Welcome to the AI for Interior Designers podcast, where creativity meets cutting edge technology. In each episode, we dive deep into the world of artificial intelligence and explore how it's revolutionizing the interior design industry. From AI powered design tools to the latest trends and innovations, we've got you covered. So plug in, relax, and let's embark on this exciting journey together. Welcome to AI for Interior Designers podcast. P.S. This intro was written by and voiced by AI to sound like your host, Jenna Goodusek. Hey there, welcome to episode eight of the AI for Interior Designers podcast. I am your host, Jenna Gadusek. So today I figured I would talk about something that I feel like I answer weekly, if not daily, <laughs> a question coming from designers um, about like actual capabilities with AI, like for imagery and creating, you know, renders and visuals and stuff like that. Where are we with like, the technology right now and what can we actually be producing? Um, I think there's a lot of misconception and I think that there's a lot of just like unknown as to what this AI um, tech in you know, all of its different uh, realms can do for you and in your design business. So today I'm going to take a deep dive into a few of the programs that I use and what I use them for. Um, I'm just gonna be totally real about it, <laughs> like what it can do and what it can't do, and um, you know, kind of where we are with the industry. And hopefully, in a year from now, we're gonna look back at this episode and be like, "Oh my gosh, we've come so far." Um, I know that we will, because <laughs> it's only like getting more and more advanced every single day. So <clears throat> let's get started. Let's start with generative AI. Okay, what is it? Basically, generative AI is when you use a use words, so a text prompt to create an image. Okay, so you are typing in a paragraph, you're typing in a few sentences, and you're saying, "This is the style. This is the room. This is the color palette. Um, you know, these are some elements that I want to see in this design plan." And then it will think about it, and it will come back with one image, four images, depending on the program that you're using. And it'll give you an idea of what you just told it using those words. So that is generative text prompting. And the main programs that people use for that are Midjourney, because they're super photorealistic. You get four options with every time you prompt it. Um, and you can just keep prompting and getting different imagery. Um, and Dolly, which is part of ChatGPT+. So that is the generative text format, um, kind of like just chatting with a friend though, uh, through Dolly Okay, and ChatGPT, right? So those are the two main ones. I mean, there's also like a million of them out there, right? Like if there's an AI platform, it probably started with generative text prompting. Um, and it's probably got that somewhere built into it. Uh, you're also going to see like Adobe Firefly, which is something that when I was at market, um, I was on a panel with a Adobe or presentation. Um, and it was cool. Like I had not really played with this longtime Photoshop user um, and actually even dabble in the generative text prompting inside of Photoshop, where basically you can like highlight an area and you can text prompt to change something in that area. Um, that's just one of the little things that it does. But Adobe Firefly is more of a um, generative, like what you would find in Midjourney. Um, I guess to say to start, <laughs> there's so much more creative, um, you know, outlets that you can use with Adobe Firefly, but that is like the primary thing, right? Is that generative text prompting text to image. Okay. So those are like the three main programs. Like I said, the majority of these um, programs that are out there claiming to be, you know, AI for interiors, they all kind of do the same thing. They're all like generative text prompting. Some of them are just created better than others. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. Um, the other thing I want to say about that is that all of the ones that I listed, um, they were basically trained off of, they say, public information um, on the internet for like capturing millions and millions and millions of inspiration uh, through photos, through um, other public domains, they say. Um, I don't know, that's still out for debate, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But, but what I do like about it is that like, 
you know, if you prompt one thing and you change like a word or even run that same prompt twice, you're not going to get the same imagery. Like it's always going to be different. And that's really just because it's compiling millions of photos that it has been trained on um, and then reconstructing them in a different way uh, than what they originally were based off of your text prompts and all of the little components and details that you're putting into that prompt. So no two images are really ever the same. Um, and I kind of like that. So the other part of this is that Adobe trained their program off their stock images. So if you are familiar with Adobe stock, which I actually had used for years um, instead of the free stock images uh, as I'm creating like course content and stuff like that, you know, sometimes you just don't want something that's been oversaturated um, from these free sites. So I would go to Adobe stock and I would use those and pay for the membership to that. But that I really like about Adobe Firefly um, and the generative options with Adobe because they are trained on like, you know, royalty free, like truly um, images that they had in their database. Now, with that being said, you will definitely notice differences in quality, um, probably just because they're a little bit behind. I, I can only assume, like, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> but I can only assume that like, the reason why we're not getting like the best quality images that we're getting in mid journey is because like they trained it and they they're trying to do the right thing um especially when they relate so heavily to creatives and people that are using their programs to generate um you know imagery and content and graphics all that stuff so i i do like the path that they have taken in like where they're learning and training for their AI is going and where it has been uh, versus mid journey Dolly and then all these other open AI formats. Okay. So that's just um, a little bit about generative, like text prompting. Then we've got this whole other side of creating visuals using AI, um, but it's called Stable Diffusion. And you've probably heard two of my past episodes where I did have um, two other companies that are for interior designers and have integrated Stable Diffusion into their software. So the difference is that, I'm going to do my best to explain this. <laughs> I don't develop tech. I just use it. So I'm going to put this in words that uh, hopefully relate to designers. But in this situation, what you can do is basically take like a line drawing or a before photo or a uh, rendering, um, you know, something that is like the uh, basically an image that shows like where you want to put things because what stable diffusion does is it keeps the integrity of your source image. So your original image, and then you can either use like text prompts, um, to write in what you want to see, keeping the integrity of that image. So for instance, if you have a line drawing elevation of a kitchen and it is black and white, but you want to see a variety of different cabinet colors, countertops, backsplash ideas. You could um, take that line drawing, upload it to one of these stable diffusion programs, and then type in blue cabinets, white countertop. And I'm saying this one because I literally have this example on my Instagram. <laughs> um, white cabinets, uh, or sorry, uh, white countertop, white backsplash, um, you know, like uh, brass poles, whatever that might be. And it will take the integrity of the lines in that image and keep everything where it is, but it's going to like wash it over with your color and materials and textures. Some of them will also like, depending on how um, much liberty you give it, basically, some of it will reinterpret images that it sees. So it'll, it, but also maintaining like the actual image. So if you're, for instance, doing like virtual staging. Okay. So say you've got a room, it needs to be better. Um, maybe it's empty. Maybe it's got some stuff already in there, but it's like not pretty. You can basically take that image, that picture, put it into a stable diffusion program, type in your prompts, um, and say like, okay, this needs to be more mid century. Um, that chair needs to be blue over there and have like, you know, uh, mid-century look to it. And you can basically override that image with a different design style and color palette, but still keeping everything the way that it looks. Again, the more liberty you give it to be like, it's okay to color outside the lines, AI, then it will. <laughs> like It will give you some more creative um, versions of what it sees. 
Now, if you go back and look at my Instagram to last year, I was looking at all of these apps that were claiming to do this. Okay. So like using the stable diffusion apps on my phone, just like wanted to try everything and anything. And they were weird. <laughs> like a year ago, they were weird. So I, I did a lot of like AI fail posts when I was, you know, going through this and trying to learn more. Um, because I would like upload a bookshelf picture and I would be like, okay, change this over to Scandinavian. Um, and if I had like a little Buddha statue, because that's what I was using uh, for my renderings, it would turn it into like a small human child sitting on the counter. <laughs> like it just would override with something that like in, you know, it would keep the picture, but it would be like, oh, okay, there's an object there. What can I make it that looks like that object? And sometimes it was small, creepy children. Um, sometimes it was just like weird shapes like it made no sense but it was like there's something there in the picture i have to override it and put something else you know on top of it that kind of makes sense with the design style that has gotten harnessed so much more like it it has so much more control now with a lot of these uh stable diffusion based programs where it doesn't get as weird and you do have control over like how much control you want to give to ai and how much you want it to just keep keep the exact lines from my my source picture and then overwrite it with that. So the other option for stable diffusion, and we're seeing this come out more and more with all these um, platforms, is basically taking color palettes or a secondary inspirational picture and saying, you know, take this style or take the uh, colors or whatever that might be and apply it to the base picture. Okay, so we're starting to see this get like really honed in. Um, the design boards are never like, I, I'm not gonna say never, but right now they're not perfect. So let's say you have your source image, maybe a line drawing. So you take your design board, you put that in as like the secondary image that you kind of want to override the first one with. And um, if it's got like a lot of text, if it's got a lot of negative space, if it's got just kind of like, just anything that it doesn't really understand, it's going to try to apply it, but then sometimes it gets weird. So in just like, honestly, the mat, the last six weeks, I'm seeing this like really honing in to be something that we are going to be able to do in a better and more controlled fashion as interior designers. So like using line drawings, using renderings, using, you know, your kitchen cabinets that you're getting from your, your cabinet supplier. Um, mine, mine do 2020 send me elevations. I'm not a kitchen designer. I will use those and I will kind of use them to create color palettes and, and ideas. Um, or I will, you know, put in some generic type things into my, my demo visualizer and render them myself as I'm coming up with ideas. Um, but this is nice because all you need is that base picture and then you can like the sky's the limit and the credits are the limit, right? You can just kind of go through and be like, okay, I need to do this color palette or I'm going to upload, um, you know, three paint chips and we're going to apply this paint chip here, this paint chip there, this paint chip there. And so that kind of depends on the um, program that you're using that is uh, Stable Diffusion Incorporated. Go ahead and listen to a few of my past episodes. Um, we have Home Visualizer AI and Corbu AI are two recent ones that I interviewed and they both kind of run off of this same premise, but do very different things. So I like that. I like that there's so many options out there and that they are getting, like becoming really um, controlled for interior designers because we can use these in our workflow, um, in the conceptual part of our workflow, right? Like. This isn't the final design, okay? Like none of this is the final design. I am still going and rendering my actual design plans, putting in measurements, putting in scale, dropping in actual furniture pieces because again, copyright restrictions, if we're adding a design board, we cannot take those exact pieces. It, it just will not do it and put it into the design board. Um, or, sorry, into the rendering. I appreciate that as a creative. Um, I, I can't imagine if like one of my textures or textiles that I make in Photoshop um, using like source images and put onto my print and demand products. I can't imagine how I would feel if somebody was maybe sourcing that image and then like took it and you know applied all my materials and textures to an actual rendering using AI and then cut me out and didn't order from me, you know, or like went and found a workaround where they then reproduced that texture and material somehow, which honestly is probably not that difficult to do, um, but they were able to like basically lift all of my IP and 
take those images or take those concepts and then just immediately start ordering their own products and creating their own things. That is the risk that we run um, and that a lot of companies will run into if this ever gets to be like not copyright restricted. Um, it's going to be a lot of stolen property and that makes me nervous. So when a lot of designers are like, oh, you know, I wish it could be the actual the actual size of my room and the actual scale of everything and then take the exact products from my design board and then just like with a with a prompt be able to put it into a rendering. I don't wish for that. I don't wish for that at all because anybody can do it and anybody can steal. So, you know, with programs like Dolly, all it has to do is like have a conversation and be like, hey, remember that um, image that I sent you earlier with that fabric or that artwork that I had in that design board? Um, can you just lift that off the design board and put it in, you know, a seamless texture that I could use somewhere else? It's not that difficult. Like, honestly, if it acknowledged the fact that it could read that and it could see that, um, it would not be difficult for people to steal from these design boards and also just like source themselves, which is kind of already out there, right? Like reverse image search, we got Pinterest, we got Copilot, you know, all these things. You can just reverse image search on a design board. We don't need somebody to be able to take that design board and put it into a rendering. That's just my opinion. I don't think we need it. I don't think it's good for our industry in any way um, for us to be able to do that. With that being said, <laughs> there are specific use cases with these programs that are in development that are looking to partner with furniture companies and with textiles and all of the things and get their catalog uploaded into their programs legitimately, okay? So these types of programs are looking for those connections to be able to sell product, right? Like, you know, wholesalers, retailers, they want that. They want to be able to sell their product quick and efficiently. Um, maybe by dropping that into a generative conceptual design plan, or maybe doing that like stable diffusion option that I was kind of talking about with the, um, the staging version, you know, but be able to just take that exact sofa, um, we know where it's from, we've got it in a catalog, and then drop it in there um, into the rendering and, you know, kind of be able to, to scale it. This also eliminates the need for 3D model um, of the actual product, right? So, like, we no longer need to put in SketchUp, 3ds Max, any other BIM rendering software, uh, modeling software, so that it has all three dimensions and all of that. Now, what we can kind of do is like what we used to do like old school in photoshop with our 2d plus design boards where we were taking images from the retailer wholesalers website removing the background changing the angle if we needed to and then dropping it into our conceptual design plan board similar to that but now we can do it more accurately um and quickly using Stable Diffusion, when there's preset design catalogs, I think Corbily AI is even working on, um, you know, just being able to grab that image and do that now, <laughs> like um, from any image. So like a light fixture, it just kind of, re it'll remove the background and um, maybe you need to put it in this PNG. I don't know, I got to talk to Taylor about that. But um, you can take images now and just kind of like generatively put them into uh, renderings. And that's only going to get better, right? But that's a one at a time type of thing. That's like, I'm a designer, here's the concept or here's the design space. I'm gonna take this one sofa and I'm going to highlight the area that it goes meticulously and I'm going to put it in there. And then generatively I can say on that photo that I just dropped in, okay, I need to see it in a blue fabric, right? Like, and then be able to text prompt. That exists now, okay? That exists in some of these programs now. But if we can get brands to no longer even have to make these 3D models like that we have to put into, you know, certain formats and then be able to download and then go find. And that has been the bane of my existence since I started rendering back in, when did I start with SketchUp? 20, I graduated in 2007. So 2007 is when I started with SketchUp and rendering ha models has always sucked <laughs> like, it just sucks <laughs> like and then these brands don't make them <laughs> and then they're like well you go make it and we're like okay well is it accurate like can we sell the product now i have to pay somebody to do it so that i can sell your product 
I don't think we're there anymore. You know, like, and yes, we still have to do that. Like we have to, because where we're at right now for scale, because AI doesn't accurately depict like measurements on a wall, um, you know, and then scale in actual product. Like, so we do still have to render, but like imagine a time in the near future where these stable diffusion type programs have preset, already ready to go, like all these different angles, all you got to do is drop it into your render or into your before picture and it'll fit in there seamlessly as if it was rendered as a 3D model. That is going to be taking over, okay? I'm calling it now. Um, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's like going almost backwards to where we were doing these design plan boards and then like background remover made its appearance and we no longer needed Photoshop because that was like the primary reason for using Photoshop for our design boards. Now with Photoshop, we can literally just highlight an area and type in a text prompt and be like, put flowers on the table of this picture. And it'll come up with three different vases of flowers for us. Like that's how far elevated from background remover Photoshop now is. So rendering needs to kick it up a notch too, right? Like nobody wants to create 3D models for products that we're going to use one time. Okay. Brands, make your 3D models. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Get off my soapbox. Send them to me if you need help dis distributing them. If you need somebody to help model them, let me know. Also, cut to a year from now, we're doing the stable diffusion thing. We're not really using as many 3D models. It, the thing is, it's not going to go away. Like there's the level of accuracy with AI is just nowhere near that yet, but we're, we're opening up the discussion. We're having the conversation. We're finding solutions that are simpler and less time consuming. That is ultimately the goal for all things AI, right? Like you might be against it. You might not be totally warmed up to it yet. But for me, the goal is always to work smarter, faster, more efficiently, and please my clients in a next level way that I wasn't able to do before. Um, you know, I, I do everything by myself for the most part. Like sometimes I will outsource little tasks here or there. Um, things like, you know, if I clip a product into my DOMA and I, I clip it and I just add the bare minimum information, I have a VA tailor that will help me to go through and just like add all the details afterwards. But that way I don't slow down my design process as I'm clipping, adding it to my design board, you know, potentially doing conceptual imagery at the same time using AI, like whatever that workflow looks like. I'm always looking to do shortcuts that get me to the end faster and then outsource little tasks that hold me as a creative back. So where AI comes into play here is that it now can do these more efficient things for us, where it's starting to like more and more through our design flow. And as they adapt to our personal situation and our personal goals. So you might just not even do conceptual imagery for your design process. I actually omitted mood boards and, um, you know, inspirational imagery, like, you know, conversations from my design process for about three or four years. Like I just had a, a questionnaire. I had like finishes, you know, that type of stuff. And I could do really good um, work with the questionnaire. Like I could really kind of nail down styles. But the second I started adding more detail to my onboarding questionnaire that has AI inspired imagery that I created using these generative text prompts. Um, so using those and then using like finishes and pictures and then qualifying questions that then basically set me up to prompt for conceptual imagery or for those design um, concept like mood board flat lay images. That saves me more time. Like even where I thought I was doing really well with like streamlining and onboarding my client process, AI has now even more elevated that process so that I can get a super clear understanding of my design, um, of the, the direction of the design, what everybody in the house um, has an opinion on, you know, like where can we merge styles? Like if you like this and you like that, how can we maybe come up with a conceptual image from the get go that blends the styles together to make sure that we're on a right on the right path before we start sourcing a single item before we jump into rendering the actual space to scale um that's where that generative imagery comes into play but based off of qualifying questions that set us up to get us there so 
these little pieces of AI integrations, not just the pretty pictures, like AI is so much more than that. Um, all these little things are going to get us to like the next tier of our business is really what it comes down to. Whether you're on a team and want to outsource any of these things to team members, um, or if you're doing it by yourself, like many of us are or started, you know, doing, we now can create custom like GPTs to help things just go faster, to help us with SEO, to help us get seen more organically online that our brains just aren't wired to do. You know, we are creatives. A lot of us just don't do the writing thing well, but that's how organic traffic comes to us. So implementing tiny little AI integrations into our workflow does not eliminate us by any means. All it does is enhances the level of quality that we can produce for our work. Right. So everything from our client experience to the way that we market our business and lay out everything. What I could do before in literally sometimes I would have, um, you know, ment mentees of mine that would want to build an opt in. And those opt-ins, we would meet for like six months and go back and forth. I would give them tasks to do. They would build it. They would write out an email sequence based off of our call. They would create the instant downloads. I'm not saying there's no work in this anymore. Like there definitely is. But if you want to create something that helps you fill your pipeline and gets you, you know, automated emails <clears throat> and create this freebie, you know, like thing that they subscribe to, you can do that in literally a day. <laughs> like, and I'm talking the full thing. What used to take six months and like a lot of hands on, I built a GPT for that. Like, I think I need to put that on a shirt. There's a GPT for that. So I built, you know, a GPT when I was like, I need to create something. What's it called? It's, um, I need to create something for, uh, lead magnets so that interior designers don't have to pay me for six months and can create this themselves and find something that's truly unique to their business. So I created a GPT and I trained it to basically work for interior designers to create a well-structured lead generator and then write it, like literally come up with all the ideas, write the content. Of course, then you'd have to go to Canva. You'd have to like actually do stuff, but even Canva's got AI infused. So that just took off a lot of time too. Um, create the imagery for it using AI uh, so that it kind of like supplements the, the content that you're creating for this freebie. And then you just write the email nurture sequences in your voice if you want to uh, using ChatGPT. I am, a little side note, I am currently working on uh, basically pulling all of my educational offerings through AI for interior designers together into like a cohesive way for you guys to be able to access everything in like a, a nice cost effective way. Okay. So that's something that I've been working on and developing. I did, I did a basic outline. Okay. So like I, I built out landing pages. I created um, different like options for services and, you know, all that stuff to kind of pull everything together. And I did that a few months ago and it didn't feel right. All right. So I was like, I'm not ready to launch this yet. I'm going to, I'm just going to sit on it and make sure I've covered all my bases. This weekend, I had like an epiphany where I was like, oh, that's what I need to do. And you guys are going to find out what all this is in about a week. So <laughs> you'll see next episode probably. But um, but what I did this weekend was after I did all my laundry, I sat in my bed and I was like, here are my goals. Here's what I currently offer. How can I put this all together in this format? And what would it include? And it literally came up with pricing structures, itemized lists, what's included, what's not included, and then a four tier system. And then from there, I was like, okay, here's my voice. So here's a little sample of how I talk, um, you know, just through some of the emails that I write, because, uh, you know, I still write stuff. <laughs> you can tell by all the spelling and typos um, and grammar errors. But I took that little snippet and I was like, okay, so now that we have establish what this new pricing structure is going to be, what's included in every structure, um, write me a launch email so that I can tell people about this. And then write me three more nurture sequence emails so that I can make sure that they really understand what this is and the value that's behind it. 
So I'm talking AI for interior designers and training here. This literally applies to every and all businesses. Like if you want a lead generator and you want a nurture sequence so that you can turn those people that opted into your freebie into paying clients, you can generate this stuff in literally like honestly, like two minutes, like one question takes like two minutes to have the full conversation, but like you could be done in an hour. All you got to do is sit down and implement it and build it out in Canva, you know, write your emails, put them into your email sequence. You've got a, if you've got somebody on your team that can help with that, then it's really just you creating the content and writing it, you know, using your, your brilliance as a designer. Um, and then like integrating that with or supplementing it with some AI filler there. But this is what I'm getting at, guys. Like, I know today I started out talking about like the different images and things that you can create, but like in the end, AI is here to enhance everything that we've been stuck on. So I know so many designers that are just stuck on like, I, how do I grow my business? Like, what do I even do? Where do I even start? Get a freebie on your website and start collecting emails. <laughs> like, it has not changed in the, what year is it? nine years that I've been doing this for my business, it is the exact same thing. The only difference is that now you can market that freebie on so many other free uh, social platforms than we could nine years ago. So the, the systems have not changed. The way we do things has changed. And AI just makes it so much more efficient and simpler for us to be able to get these tasks done that are necessities for our business. I'm not just talking like pretty pictures and the AI images that we can create. I'm talking like backend crap that we don't want to do. <laughs> like that is what GPTs are built for is, or you can build them for is to basically do everything that you need to get done faster so that you can get to the things that you enjoy. That is literally it. Like that is what I use AI for, but I'm still like old school in that. Like I want to render stuff myself. Um, I want to like, you know, create the VR walkthrough tours from scratch. I want to create videos. Like I love doing design boards, um, but there's a time and a place for everything. And if I can streamline any part of my process and still maintain control of it all, I'm going to do it. And that's where AI comes into play. Okay. So I know that was a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, I do have AI Day coming up. That's next week. Um, if you're not familiar, AI Day is basically just a day that I created to bring everything together. Okay. So um, from 11, 11, 1130 Eastern to about 3, 330. Um, this is for people that are like, I need to get started. But like, I haven't had time to even sit down and look at all this AI stuff. That's why I made this day. Okay. So we will start with like, how do you sign up for chat, chat GPT? How do you get the plus version? What is chat GPT? Give me a tour around the inside. What are all the chat GPTs that you built, Jenna? Let's start using them. And then we're going to like build stuff. Like you can literally start immediately using my GPTs. I will show you how to build your own during this class. Um, we will use Dolly. We will create generative images. And then I'm going to show you how to use mid journey and basically like how they all function together in your workflow. Cause right now all my classes are kind of separated, which, you know, when I launched this in November, it made sense because that's just where AI programs were. But now in my workflow, I cross over all of these programs together and use them all on a daily basis. So that's what AI Day is about. You guys um, are welcome to join. If you want a secret um, early bird pricing code, uh, shoot me an email, Jenna at AI for Interior Designers, and I will get you that private um, code so that you can still get that AI pricing um, for uh, early bird pricing. It is on the 29th, so uh, you have until about 11 o'clock on the 29th to enroll. Um, and it will be recorded if you can't make it live, but it is hands-on, so I hope that you can join live. Um, if you can't make it to this time, no worries, or if the class closes, because um, as of right now, as I'm recording this on uh, the 23rd, I only have 15 seats uh, actually 14 seats um, available because it is a small class size. And I do want to make sure that like I can answer one-on-one -on -one questions during this. Cause like I said, this is for people that like just have not had the time to sit down and learn AI, but want to learn it all in one day. 
I'm going to make it as easy as possible. Um, and as like hands on as possible, because that's how I learn. I need to get in there and do stuff. I need to mess stuff up. And that's how I never do it again. <laughs> that's how I learn. So that's what AI day is all about. Okay. Um, so shoot me an email if you want to uh, code for the early bird before the 30th. If you're listening to this later, stay tuned. I really want to offer this again, um, maybe over the summer, we'll kind of see how it all goes. Um, but then if you're not going to do AI day, if you're kind of already on the right track, I got something else coming for you guys on the 30th that's really going to help you with your AI education um, and also access to me. Like if you ever want to just do business advisory type of stuff, I do those calls almost every day. Um, just to keep it on the DL. <laughs> like, I don't ever really tell anybody. I've been doing this for literally years. Um, I think uh, six years now I've been doing one-on-one -on -one calls. So um, whether it's AI training, render training, um, you know, any, any business advice like e-design, how to start your business, how to transition your business, that's what I do. So this new thing that I'm working on, you're going to have a lot more personal access to me if that's something that you want. And if not, there's other options for you. <laughs> um, and just making it affordable. I get it. The economy is crazy, but we got to make a living, right? Like, so I want you guys to know these skills so that you can do everything that I just said today, which is work way more efficiently to get higher results faster in your design business. Okay. Not just about the pretty pictures, got to do all that back end work too, that nobody really likes to do. Uh, some people never do. And then they're like, where are my clients? That's why. <laughs> Gotta do it. Gotta do it. So, all right, guys, that is uh, episode eight of the podcast. Can't believe it's eight already. We just keep showing up talking about AI. Um, and, um, and if you're ever interested in telling me and everybody else on the podcast what you're using and how you're using AI, I do have a form and you guys can uh, apply to be on the show because I, I just want to learn from you all the things. Like that is what this is about, right? All right. You have a great day and I will see you next week for AI for Interior Designers podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the AI for Interior Designers podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and tune in next week for more AI tips for your design business. See you next time.